welcome to Dublin's quietest avenues in all of Europe. This is O'Connell and this huge beautiful avenue has a whole lot of wonderful architecture and we are in the north side of the river Liffey. So Kid Milipacha everyone, let's walk around the north side of Dublin. I'm Ariel and this is Urbanus. Bella, Banajotis, and all the urbanists out there. We are on O'Connell Street, a huge map. Has a lot of the bigger businesses, um, also a lot of bus lanes, the tram, and uh, the namesake of this street, Daniel O'Connell, right over here. Let me show you him from the front, and then we're gonna walk a little bit further into O'Connell Street. Blue skies. I came to gray, rainy Dublin. I'm getting sunshine every single day. <laughs> Let me show you the front of O'Connell. So here's a split between North and South Dublin. Over there is South. That's where we explored the last few days, basically. But this time we're gonna stick to the North. And here is Daniel O'Connell. So this is this gentleman Catholic emancipation wanted to separate from uh, the rule of the Anglican Church here in the former colony of the UK. And he was known as one of the very first freedom fighters on behalf of Irish independence. That's why this street The Irish government has a seagull to guard him every single day. Here's a little political cartoon. He wanted to see Ireland the true Irish, uh, true Catholic country rather than being uh, Protestant rule, as it mostly was for quite a while. GG, as they say in Irish, Giedich, welcome. Let's see here, Giedich means hello. So this way is Trinity College and then St. Stephen's Green, Grafton Street, many of the famous sites. There's one famous site here in the north. Today is a wandering, so we're going with no particular direction, no particular history tour today. We're just going with the flow. The Irish flow. For the crack. Hey, Bella, what a beautiful, glorious Sunday. So bright and sunny, no rain in sight. Oh yeah, it's gorgeous today. Gorgeous weather. No need for a jacket, cardigan. If you're a mega urbanist, stay tuned. You're going to get yourself a good postcard. Here using these green mailboxes. I like that they're green, just like Ireland. Uh, <laughs> so that's amazing.
The other way you can become a mega urbanist is if you're a member, triple, FB, YT, and Patreon all at the same time concurrently. Uh, so if you're a mega urbanist, do reach out to me and let me know your address if you haven't already. So let's check out these statues. Who are these guys? Hey, Susie. Maureen says, keep following your dreams. I will, Maureen. You as well. Maureen, thank you so much for being a mega urbanist along with Janice. Hey, Judy. Wendy is here. Welcome, Wendy. Kathy sent 50 stars. Stars, we're getting so close to our goal. Oh my God. We are 19,000 stars away. So send those stars. They're double if we reach 100K in a few days. Here's a statue of Sir John Gray. Hmm, who is this? This is the progenitor, uh, proprietor of the Freeman's Journal of Kilkenny City. Interesting. A Kilkenny gentleman here. Stay tuned, Kilkenny just may make an appearance on Urbanist. So feel free to ask me any questions about Dublin, my experiences here. Of course, I'm nowhere near an expert of the city, but uh, I can speak about my experiences here nearly a week already. There's the sun, yeah. There's sun here today. And a gigantic... What? What is this? Ah! Oh! Oh! oh. So, what the hell? Why is... Why is there a, why is there a gigantic needle? That's that's very dangerous. This is very dangerous because before there ever were Celts, before there ever were the Neolithic or megalithic people or Neolithic people but built megalithic structures. There were, according to Irish legends, the Fomorians. The Fomorians were the true first settlers of this island, this Emerald Isle. Maybe even before it was an island, maybe before it, when it was part of Greater Doggerland, when it was actually connected to the mainland of Europe. Well, these Fomorians were giants. Maybe they were 10 feet tall. Sometimes they say maybe they were even 30 feet tall. Thing is with these Fumorians, like many giants throughout mytholo uh, mythology all around Europe, such as uh, the mythology in Greece as well, they were also associated with being evil, or at least being not so good, malevolent. Well, these Fumorians had to be ousted from the country. That's where the first e heroes of ancient Celtic myths started popping up. Well, is this a way to banish any Fomorians from coming here? So if they decide to step back into Dublin, they'll pinch their foot. <laughs> Janice, thank you so much for the $5 super chat. I appreciate you. The people speak Celtic. Well, Celtic is is a language family. There is no language called Celtic. It's almost like saying, do people speak Germanic? Or do people speak Anglo? Um, Germanic is a language family, such as Celtic. So there's a few languages under the Celtic family. Also, uh, it's just Kate says that the, the Dubliners call it Stiffy on the Liffy. <laughs> yeah, it's apparently the tallest sculpture, man-made sculpture ever. <laughs> it's huge. It's uh, a little bit more than 300 feet tall. So uh, uh, a fourth of an Empire State Building. It's uh, quite gigantic. Just tall. As tall as many New York City high-rises. 
and uh, it replaced the uh, what used to be a huge plinth and this plinth had Admiral Nelson who won the Battle of Trafalgar Admiral Nelson his statue is actually very famous because it's still Trafalgar Square in London uh, so it was very similar to that one that's still up there thing is with this a he was a Brit oh those damn Brits <laughs> and B he uh, a lot of people disrespected the statue so a lot of people disrespected the statue and I was speaking with a local K who is a loyal loyal viewer and she was telling me that people used to piss on it they used to frolic on it they used to take baths on it they would throw trash on it they were really disrespected. By 1922, Irish Ireland broke out into a civil war. There was two parts of Ireland. One, there was the part that wanted to sign the Treaty of Ireland with the UK, United Kingdom. For context, United Kingdom is England, Wales, and Scotland. That treaty would have involved Ireland to become a dominion of the UK meaning they would have been part of the United Kingdom, like Scotland is, and the UK, oh actually, no, they would have been part of the Dominion, the meaning that they would still have need to put allegiance to the Queen. So they would have been a part of the UK, but they would have had to pledge allegiance to the Queen. Just like Canada, just like Australia, New Zealand, and a few other countries around the world. However, there were also people who did not want any dominion. So they duped it out, including a lot of people from Northern Ireland. That's why Northern Ireland ended up staying part of the UK, but not the rest of the island. During that ensuing civil war, that plinth that used to be there was destroyed. Here's another depiction of what used to be here. Pat, thank you so much for the 500 stars. Yeah, Pat was um, Pat has been a very loyal viewer, lots of Irish roots, and um, she was trying to figure out how to send stars. So I'm so glad you uh, got to figure it out. I know tricky uh, Facebook is a bit tricky, so thank you so much for the 500 stars. I appreciate you. So that is what we would have been looking before. What a gorgeous sky. Lori, send another 500 stars. Yes, we're getting closer and closer to our goal. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be showing you many other places. How do you not hurt yourself? Why to see that giant needle? <laughs> I guess they just wanted to build a gigantic needle for the crack. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, 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 not, not, not American crack. Uh, they wanted to build a needle for for the fun of it. Okay, that, yeah, that's not gonna work out. It has too many meanings. <laughs> Let's go to the post office. Wait, why are we going to the post office? Today's Sunday, so post is closed. I'm not sending postcards yet. We're going to the post office because there's some little secret in front of it. Hey, Dennis, Queen Mother, nice to see you here. All right. So, if anyone's curious on YT, why I'm saying star stars are um, on Facebook. What a beautiful trolley! Yeah, gorgeous trolleys here, and there's like a tea trolley here. There's apparently some tea tours, which I gotta look into. Looks so cool. How does it stay up against strong winds? I don't know. That is a good question, Janice. Dawn to 235 stars. Yeah, yeah. Do we get a ride later on one of the buses? Yeah, we could do that. We can, we can do a ride. Um, let me know. How much is the bus? I have change on me. I think you can pay in cash. And I, I don't think there's strict laws against filming on public transportation. I'm not sure.
Here is the general post office, the GPO for short. Very beautiful neoclassical Beaux Arts building. I think they would consider it neoclassical. You can step inside. A little bit hard to see right now, but stay tuned. I might go inside at some point. Yes, yeah, Apple, D, this is DJI. DJI. Oh, yeah. See, Apple have a mall. I, they do? Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Okay, so right oh, over there's... here. <laughs> All right. What are these? Is this mere decay of the building? Right here, another one. We have a very deep one here. We got a lot of people passing. <laughs> a very deep one here. What are these? Let me know. Hey, just Kate says, uh, Kil Kilman Jail uh, respond, and they said if I get lucky, I could get tickets. <laughs> Kill him in jail. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> get tickets manually? Come on. Uh, thank you so much for reaching out. That's good. Appreciate it. 1916. Ireland had enough. There was a controversy about whether Ireland could get home rule or not. Home rule means that they would have some type of self autonomy, but they'll be part of the United Kingdom. Or they can continue just being a colony, which will have been equally as bad. Well, Ireland had enough of either option. So they unleashed the rebellion. It was called the Easter Uprising. And they made a proclamation. Patrick Pierce, one of the seven signatories of this proclamation, came up here in front of the General Post Office and declared Ireland to be an independent free state, not under the dominion of the UK, but completely free. Well, the UK wasn't going to have any of it. And this was during World War I. UK was fighting a war against the Germans. But the Germans, well, they wanted UK to have a two-front war. So they started sending weapons over to the Irish. The, UK, the British intercepted it. They couldn't get the weapons. Then the Germans were like, hmm, maybe we should actually send actual soldiers. Well, the British also intercepted that. So they didn't get actual soldiers. But the resistance moved forward. And fighting broke loose here in the middle of Dublin. These bullet holes are the same bullet holes that shot up the general post office or the places where they did most of the fighting, especially around here on O'Connell Street, destroyed many of these buildings. You can still see those bullet holes to this day. And one of the signatories left their pair of shoes. May they rest in peace. So, the Germans actually want to spread some propaganda in their own home country about the entire uprising in order to stir up more fighting against the Irish and the British in order to really get a full two-front war. And they even made a postcard about the destruction that happened here. And as I've shown a few times, this is the proclamation 
that they made, which can be found at the Long Room. I have a 360 video of it in Trinity College Library. And down below we have the seven signatories, one of them being Patrick Pierce, who's the man who wrote it down. All those men were rounded up, hung, shot, killed, and executed. Think about that. Um, as an American, it's interesting learning about our American history compared to Irish history uh, in terms of the independence movement. Imagine if in America, all the signatories of the Declaration of Independence were rounded up by the Brits, hung, shot, whatever, executed in their various ways. Imagine if that would have happened. Imagine if John Adams, Ben Franklin, John Hancock, Thomas Jefferson, all these men, I'm not sure if, I think Alexander Hamilton also signed it. All these men would have been shot, rounded up and shot. We might have had, it might have dampened the revolution, but maybe not for so long. It might have made things a lot worse in America. So if you put your, if, if as an American you put yourself in those shoes, thinking about what if that happened, you can, that, that's what happened here in Ireland. You can see how things really went crazy after that. And that's why there was fighting within this very soil and it was very, very bloody. So there's an actual experience here, though it's closed today on Sunday. Uh, they have like a huge courtyard also where uh, some fighting was done. The founding fathers all knew they were signing their death warrant. Yes, a lot of them were indeed afraid that they were going to be rounded up and uh, executed. So here's one of the main shopping streets, Henry Street. Look at this. Butler's Chocolate Coffee. It's like the Starbucks of, of Ireland. Eibel, thank you so much for tuning in. Eibel says, watch around here. Much rougher area. Indeed, indeed. Being from New York, <laughs> the so-called rough areas of Europe, <laughs> pale sometimes in comparison. <laughs> so I appreciate the warning, everyone. But yeah. <laughs> New, New York rougher areas are by far way rougher than sometimes my countries in Europe. Let me uh, go up, I want to go the opposite way so I can show you more of uh, towards the docks, but let's just walk a little bit up the street and then we'll turn around. Looks like there are many immigrants and foreigners here. Yes, yes. I think a little bit further down, there's like a Middle Eastern area or Pakistani area because there was a lot, well, not Pakistan, but there was a lot of like kebab shops a little bit further down. This used to be probably an industrial area, judging by the architecture, too. Here we have like a market. Oh, this is nice. Cool little market. Have I seen the Rory Gallagher statue? No, not yet. Not yet. There it is. I'm... What? What's here, I More street market. Oh, cool. When does it open? I heard Ireland has a huge uh, Polish population. They do indeed have a huge Polish population. Hey, Lisa. Wendy, nice to see you back. Jimmy says, where can you get mugged? In New York, New York. <laughs> indeed, indeed.
Is north side the Pol uh, Polish side or the posh side? I don't think it's the posh side. I think the posh side was where we were yesterday um, because I passed by a few restaurants and they were very expensive <laughs> and uh, very nice, fancy hotels as well. So I think, I think the other side is more the posh side. Do let me know uh, for any v Irish viewers out there. What's the posh area of Dublin? And what's the hipster or the young... Well, Ireland is already a very young country, but where's like the uh, young people hang out in? Here's Arnott's. What is this? Is this like the Irish Macy's? Looks like it. Beautiful building though. Look at that. Zoe says Southside is more posh, really? Oh. Yep. So yeah, where we were yesterday. So today we're going we're on the north side. Okay, let's backtrack. I wanna show you the other way around. We have a Moore Street Market in Williamsburg, but it's not as nice, <laughs> says uh, Susie. Yeah. It's a mall, yeah, yeah, it's a huge out outdoor shopping area. Kay says, yeah, south side is the posh side. Yep, so where we were yesterday, around St. Stephen's Green, Marion Park. Just saw the first Garda vehicle. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of Garda here. Garda is police in Irish. And yeah, there's quite a bit of them patrolling the area. We got a huge super chat. Who is this? Hey, MDN. Thank you so much for a $20 super chat. MDN says, maybe comparable histories of 38 Native Americans that were hanged on December 26, 1862, as an order of former President Abraham Lincoln after the 1862 Dakota War, which was also known as the Sioux Uprising. That is fascinating, MDN. Thank you for putting that down. You know, a lot of that history tends to be overlooked and forgotten. Um, especially since after that, it seems like a lot of those rebellions were quelled or squashed. So thank you for the reminder. Yeah, it uh, goes to show that the U.S. definitely had a complicated history on par with what we see here in Ireland as well. All right, let's go down there. Let's go the other side of the needle. Good old needle. They build it for the crack. Or I mean, uh, because it's nice art. That's that's why. Let's touch the needle. I don't know. Don't touch needles, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, actually, don't touch needles. Just in case. Just play it safe. Don't touch the needle. Tell that to your kids. I touch many buildings, but uh, maybe not a needle. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome. Ooh, fresh Mexican burritos. What? <laughs> With falafel. What? Burritos and falafel. Oh my god. <laughs> That's a weird combination. <laughs> 
Hey, I'm Diane. Thank you. And it still continues. Indeed, it does. Here's one of the... Well, I read one of the more older pubs in this city. Madigan's. Sexy Modi says, which one's cooler? The beam in Chicago or the needle? Well, maybe if they were put together, it might be an exploded beam. Is, is this a market? Because the streets don't look no, not as clean. Yeah, the needle's uh, a little bit more than 300 feet. Go, get into that pub, says Pauline. You know, uh, filming, I tried already filming in pub. I tried to do a pub yesterday uh, for like a food video. They were all super packed. At least the ones with food, uh, because I want to show you Irish stew. They were all super packed to the brim with people. And um, and uh, many of them just turned me away uh, if I asked for a table, because uh, many of them that have food have tables, uh, and they had no tables. Um, so I couldn't show you anything last night. And then beyond that, I, I've tried uh, other pubs. You're so close to other people. It's a bit hard to film in the pub. Uh, so stay tuned. Maybe I'll find some pub that's a little bit more relaxed to film in, but stay tuned. All right, let me go this way. Let me just go a little bit further down on this street, and then we'll go back to the River Liffey. Ooh. Uh oh, a bomb is about to go off. Oh no, it's just the street sign. Okay, good. Hey, Surinim, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm wary of packed places these days, says Lauren. <laughs> I feel you, Lauren. I, I, I do like going to places there where I feel a little bit more relaxed. Quite noisy here. Yeah, a lot of kids pointing around. Let's check out this building. I'm really curious about this building. What's up with it? What's the crack with this building? Oh, I see an entrance. Well, this is a church. A relaxed pub is called the coffee shop, says so the whole <laughs> All right, this is a church. Who wants to walk into a church? St. Mary's Pro Cathedral. Oh, this is a pro cathedral. Ain't no more are we in the amateur league of cathedrals. Now we've entered the pro level of cathedrals today. And what is this nice little building over here? Look at that. Any uh, Dubliners, let me know what, what building this is. How many churches are there in Ireland? I don't know yet. Let's walk into the Pro Cathedral.
to everyone out there. May you have a good peace of mind and a full heart as you live day by day. So that was the Pro Cathedral, St. Mary's Pro Cathedral, which apparently is a replacement cathedral, uh, maybe while another one is being repaired. B. Griffin says, another great uh, church tour. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. That's awesome. Here is Mayor Frances Taylor and Margaret Ball. She was a mayoress of Dublin. Oh. Someone asked me how many uh, churches are in Ireland. I don't know yet, uh, but judging by Dublin, it does not seem like it has more than a city in Italy. Uh, when I went to Rome, there was a church almost every corner. Uh, and then a few other cities in Italy, maybe not so much Venice, but uh, a few other cities had a lot of churches. But here I don't see too many. Uh, but let me know how many churches are in Dublin, if anyone has that figure. They're mostly going to be Catholic, uh, because Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, is mostly a Catholic country. Even though I think um, people are really not attending, uh, it's still associated with being Catholic. So, no discussion of politics in the comments, please. Unless if it's more than a hundred years old. There are few less churches than pubs. <laughs> yeah, there's probably more pubs than churches. Many churches, lots in the suburbs, says Mark. Over 4,000 churches in Ireland. That figure seems low compared to, like, I imagine Italy probably has, but Rome has a few, almost a thousand in the city alone. There's nine in Kilkenny, says uh, K. Oh, cool. Okay. 4,000 is very low. Yeah, that is a low number. 
<laughs> I think Brooklyn Heights has more churches. <laughs> well, it doesn't have uh, uh, thousands, but Brooklyn Heights, you see a church in every corner in New York City. Oh yeah, B. Griffin, good point. So B. Griffin says the city of Rome is almost as populous as the island of Ireland. Ireland has like 5 million, uh, so Rome is still a little bit smaller. Rome is about 3 million. 4 million, is it? Yeah, Yeah. so you're right, and it's close. All right, let's go to the next tree and go towards the River Liffey. Ooh, coffee. Central Brew Cafe. That looks very New York style. Wow. Is Dublin a friendly, friendly city? Yes, people here are indeed very friendly. Very friendly. Just do not read the TikTok comments to my Ireland videos. <laughs> It'll give you the wrong impression. But in person, people here are very, very friendly. Um, so people here are very friendly. I feel very safe during the daytime. I gotta admit, at night, it doesn't feel as comfortable um, compared to Rome or, or even Athens. I'm not sure why, it's just I see more homeless people around and I see more uh, um, vagabonds and, and junkies around. So it, it doesn't feel as kind of relaxed as those other cities. Uh, but during the daytime, I feel completely safe. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Have there been many people approaching me for loose change? Yes. Yes, a lot more. Even, e even while I'm filming a video. Uh, as evidenced in my very first walking video in, in the country, I had a man uh, ask me for money. Hey, Kay says, don't forget that we have five days to reach our goal. Yes, we have about 18,000 stars left. So send on those stars. Thank you so much for sending those stars. They're doubling at Facebook. And that means I can show you really cool places, especially these upcoming two days. I'm going to do very interesting locations in a series of mini live videos. Eibel says on your right. What's on my right? Eibel. Are the shops closed on Sunday? I don't think all of them, but yeah, we see some shops closed. I, some popular restaurants are also closed on Sunday. Bible says not normally shops tend to be open on Sundays. Mir says traveling west. <laughs> Bella says vagabonds, homeless, and junkies. Oh my! <laughs> well, every city has uh, those crowd of people. Uh, I don't. Every city has them, so, uh, but yeah, I've seen, I've seen more in Ireland, but still pales in comparison to New York. Jay, thank you so much for 500 stars. Uh, as I mentioned, still pales in comparison to New York. A lot of people warn me about things here in Ireland um, and New York. <laughs> still a lot more, so uh, New, New, either, either New York has to figure itself out or Europe is actually really good at uh, figuring out all these social issues. So it's either one of those two. New York is terrible at it or Europe is very good at it. Uh, these next two days, I'm going to not do, uh, there's no scheduled live video. We're resuming the 4 p.m. live videos on Wednesday, but I will be going live for many live videos, one or two or three 
these upcoming two days because I'll be doing day trips. So stay tuned at random times. I can't really promise any time because I don't know the full itinerary of these trips and I can't really calculate it ahead of time. Um, but if you put on notifications, you'll be able to see it. Otherwise, you can always see the replays. So stay tuned these next two days. No scheduled video, but random mini lives. And I'm loving your new shirt. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you guys enjoy my uh, red flannel to keep cozy during this mildly chilly day. So here we have an elevated train. Does this connect to the main train station? And look at this alleyway. Kind of cool, though empty. There's a hostel, a random hostel in this alleyway. Mir and Wendy says, nothing beats a great red shirt, flannel, looking great. Oh, thank you so much. Cool alley, yeah, cool alley with a very quiet looking hostel. And you all know what happens with hostels in Europe. You know. That's the customs house, says Ivo. Oh, cool. Okay, so we're gonna head over to. You're not far from the train station. Oh, awesome. Okay, everyone. Who wants to join me on the train? And we'll just head over to another city. <laughs> Let's do it all in live. We'll just go over oh, to Donegal. Maybe we can go to, uh, to uh, Kinsale. Kildare, maybe, and let me, let me know. What, what, what city would you like to go to via the train station? Can I cross here? Here's the customs house. This looks a whole lot like New York City. Oh my god. Am I am I in Brooklyn right now? Is this the Bronx? This also kind of looks like London as well. If you uh, follow the river, it'll take you to the arena. Yeah, we're gonna go back to the river right now. Renee says it's not coincidence due to Amsterdam. Does Amsterdam have an influence here in Dublin? That's interesting. Do let me know, Renee. Is this the bus station? Yeah, it looks like a bus station. George says when you're in Brooklyn, ask yourself if you're in Dublin. <laughs> Timothy O'Connell. We started it right by the namesake of your, uh, <laughs> the street of your namesake. It says that they copied Brooklyn. <laughs> maybe, maybe.
Helen says, bus areas on your left. You can get a bus everywhere. Ooh. What bus shall we take? Take the Galway Gallop. The Air Express. Robert says it's seven hours to Galway. What? Can't be seven hours to to uh, drive to Galway. I think it's only a two two and a half hour drive. Sinead says I think the copying would be the other way around. You'll be surprised. New York is is um, a lot of the development here happened around the same time as New York. The modern buildings that we're seeing. All right, let's go by the River Liffey, shall we? Who wants to have a lift at the Liffey? Alan asked, am I going to drive in Ireland? So, in Ireland, unlike other countries, does not have a strong insurance policy. So they put a multi-thousand dollar hold on your credit card. That's why I've heard, that's why I've read. That's what people have told me personally. And um, I don't have the budget for a multi-thousand dollar credit card hold. Can't take that risk so so i'm not too optimistic of uh renting a car so here's the river liffey okay now we're seeing the modern parts i gotta put on the sunglasses because it's very bright So I didn't, did not think I would be doing this an entire trip to Ireland. I was about to leave these in my, in my lodging, but well, it is quite very sunny weather. So the sun is directly in my eyes, especially with the cell phone screen. So I have to put on some sunglasses, not because I want to look cool, but because it's practical. All right, let's go. So let me know uh, if anyone has any pro tips to circumvent um, that type of multi-thousand dollar credit card hold. It just seems rather kind of ridiculous. Uh, if there's any other way to rent a car without uh, going through that, do let me know. You're looking extremely handsome today, says Bella. Oh, thank you so much, Bella. So it's because of all that butter. I've been I've been eating all that Irish butter, and uh, yeah, it makes the skin glow. That's the beauty about Irish butter. It makes the skin glow. Makes the heart pump. Let's keep on going. The beautiful River Liffey, ladies and gentlemen. Crystal clear. I mean, dark green waters of the River Liffey. What's that building behind you? I don't know. It looks cool though. Very modern. Probably 1983. That was built in 1983, I'm guessing. So let me know what year was that, was that built. These are George's, uh, George's Key. Okay, thank you so much. I will. MZ says, I gotta try Irish butter now. Oh yeah. You get that Irish butter? Mm. You're going to be glowing. Toilet brush salesman is the hipster look is complete. Indeed, indeed. Toilet. 
or you could say the grunge look from the 1990s. Helen says, I don't think that's true. Just ring a car company. Okay, I will do. Oh, yeah. That is a very sad monument. Hey, Abdo, nice to see you here and welcome. Yeah. Oh my God, that's scary. She even has spider webs. Oh, no. They all have spider webs. Eighteen forties, many decades. Ireland was mostly a full-on agricultural society. The problem is, many of those plantations were not owned uh, by the Irish. They were owned by English lords and English businessmen, or British businessmen. Their interest was to sell as much crop as possible. So Ireland was not only consuming its own crop that was made in here, but was also exporting over to the UK. Well, a lot of the Irish did not have access to the top of the level crops. These other types of vegetables that people would eat. Let me know uh, what vegetable would be eaten a lot by the English during that uh, time. So a lot of these poor Irish farmers that did not own their own land were merely tilling the land and renting some property off of it, aka a plantation system in many cases, aka modern day serfdom, aka very similar to Jim Crow slavery laws in uh, the US. There's a lot of overlap. They had only access to one major crop, the potato. And that's how many of them sustained themselves. However, there was a massive blight, a disease that ravaged the potato crop. Problem is, unlike the potato in South America, where there's actually a huge variety of different potatoes, here they grew it in a monoculture, one type of potato. That type of potato got destroyed by the blight and there was no other alternative. There was food being grown here in Ireland. And of course there's access to seafood and there's seaweed and there's a lot of other things. But the poor Irish farmers had no access to it. Because during that time in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s, they were still exporting those good crops and good seafood over to the UK. The Irish started dying out. Famine struck the country. And in order to escape the starvation, the disease, and the oppression they decide to go to other parts around the world. By the 1870s, one in four New Yorkers were Irish. Many of them were escaping this starvation. The slums of the Lower East Side, no matter how dangerous and stinky and, de and disease-ridden they were, were far better alternative than starving to death. They also moved to other parts, like my own native Puerto Rico. Luckily, a few Irish who had a little bit more means, families were given some land by the Spaniards to farm in the middle of Puerto Rico. So to this day, there's still Irish descendants in the middle of Puerto Rico. And you still see names like Murphy and O'Hara or, or Patrick and other different last names like those. And of course they moved to other parts. There's more than 500,000 Irish in Mexico. Because of all this famine, 
Ireland is one of the biggest diasporas in the entire world. Up to 80 million people. So it's between 60 million and 80 million people are descendants of the Irish. For context, the Chinese, that has a way bigger population from most of world history, has a diaspora of, I think, what, 120, 130 million? Irish almost gets to that level, and it's from a tiny little island. During this time, right before the famine, Ireland had a population of upwards of 8 million people. The population hasn't recovered ever since. Even despite gaining its independence, becoming a free state, becoming the Celtic Tiger, rising up and then starting up all these financial institutions that we see all around here, and despite going through a recession and then picking up once again and allowing some of the biggest tech companies to set up here with very low taxes and uh, infusing so many riches into the country and it becoming one of the richest countries now in the world with one of the highest average incomes. Ireland still hasn't recovered that population because of this right here. All these moments of starvation. And the stories of these people are told right down here. They're actually real people that they're depicting, such as the McKillen family from Belfast, Pat Henry and family Dublin, and a few many other families here. So there we go. As well, did Argentina have uh, Irish? Yeah, Irish literally moved to many parts of the world. South Africa, Argentina, Australia, New Zealand, uh, US, Canada, Puerto Rico, Mexico. Let me know if other countries, I think Chile, Chile as well. Chile actually has a very famous um, liberator by the name of O'Higgins, which I think should be, he should be Irish descendant. So even Chile had Irish descents. He told that story so well, says Becky. Oh, Becky, <laughs> I'm glad I did. I know it's a very complicated history. In fact, we passed a major milestone, says Sinead. We surpassed five million. Yeah, that's awesome. Five million, uh, not seen before the famine. Yeah, so the famine, before the famine was eight million, so it's still, still quite a ways away, but wow, oh, yeah. I read that 40% of Americans are Irish. The, the, uh, the number should be high, but I'm not sure if it's hot, as high as 40%, probably not. Um, because there's there's a lot of German blood also in America and uh, Mexican blood too and there's yeah America is very varied uh, but should be pretty damn high let let us know if anyone knows the exact figure what are these does this used to be a drawbridge Zap says Ariel is a good storyteller that's what he's known for oh thank you so much I am in the land of storytelling so there is a lot of competition here for a telling a good story. Let me know if anyone has any recommendations. Is there anything else to see a little bit further down? Here we have the epic 
Museum, which actually covers the history of the famine. Let's cross the street. Just bear with me. This area looks uh, revitalized. I think it is, yeah. It's, it should be all pretty new. Um, probably 50, 60 years old. There's an archway. I wonder where this led. May have been part of a building. And were these docks before? Wikipedia says 10% are Irish. 10% of Americans are Irish descent. Yes, thank you so much. Is there Mexicans living in Ireland? There's a lot, Tony. I'm not sure. Uh, nowhere near multi-percentage, but uh, in Dublin, I've heard a lot of uh, uh, Mexican Spanish being spoken. But 97 point something percent of Ireland is Irish, so there's it's not a really diverse country by no means. Which, you know, most countries in the world is that, you know, the U.S. and Canada and uh, parts of London, they're an exception to, <laughs> to, the, to what is the case in most of the world. On the opposite side, you'll find the old harbor office turned into a pub. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. You can see how high the water is. Yeah, what did this used to be? Does the water actually flow into here? Oh, these are the canals. Right down there. Daniel says most of my friends are Irish descent. Yeah, that's the case, especially if you live in Boston, parts of New York, Chicago, and maybe Philadelphia as well. Yeah, Philadelphia as well. But definitely Boston and New York. You probably encounter most Irish descendants. Are you doing the Viking tour? Ooh, let me know. I've heard a little bit about that. I have not researched about it. Helen, do let me know. What's the Viking tour? Yeah, so that's a canal. I assume it leads a little bit further in. There used to be more industry. As I mentioned, north side was an industrial area. As we can see with these new buildings being constructed, usually industrial areas is where they redevelop into bigger office buildings. As a society grows from manufacturing or heavy industry into a more financial and tech based economy so this is the Irish Immigration Museum right here epic but we are going to continue forth Sally I love the sound of seagulls oh yeah me too it's so nice very nice sound to see this. Becky says, do the Viking tour, it's hilarious. Okay. I don't have too many more days left in Dublin. Alright, let me... What can we see over here? I'm enjoying the Sunday walk with you. You can go inside. It's, there's a big food court. Food courts are closed due to the pandemic. I, well, I wish I could show a food court. So, but that's nice to know. Hopefully they reopen it.
Are you going to visit the Irish countryside? Stay tuned, Michael. Yes, tomorrow I'll show. These next two days, you're gonna see some more of the countryside. Esfield says, please, no more songs involving cockles and mussels. You sure? Sure, Esfields? It's, it's because the song is so good that it'll distract from everything else in the show. I get it, Esfields. I get it. It's better not to play that song. It's too good. We don't want to outshine the beautiful work that's being done here in wandering around the city. Okay, I think we've re pretty much reached the end of what we're gonna see here in, in uh, this area of Dublin. Let's maybe cross the, the bridge down here. Cross the street first. How big is Ireland? Can you walk across it? So Ireland is 6.5 times larger than Puerto Rico. I think walking across it probably will take you a few, uh, a week or so. Don't quote me on that, but I think it'll probably be long. But you can drive across it, I think in a matter of five, six, seven hours. Shouldn't be that long. Let me know if anyone, uh, for Irish viewers, is there a road, a highway that really you can circumvent the island, either via the perimeter or north, south, east, west? Let me know how long it takes. The big whitish bridge in front of you is the Samuel Beckett Bridge. Okay, we'll go there. Thank you so much, Sinead. You could take the ferry to Wales. What? Wait, really? Barris? I can go to Wales? Oh my god. That's awesome. Is this like ever going to change? I am not jaywalking, everyone. Nothing to be seen here. Three hour drive from Dublin to Galway. Okay, thank you so much for letting us know. Who is this? Seamills, thank you so much. No, James Joyce. Uh, monuments, you know, there's a bar that's featured in the book Ulysses that's still open. Um, I have, I think I p might have passed by it yesterday, but did not know about it. There should be another, the, uh, well, Ulysses all takes place in Dublin, right? Because it's only one day. I never read the book, but that's as far as I know, that's what it's about. Many spots here associated with James Joyce. I was wondering if it's Calatrava's. Yeah, is this bridge Calatrava, the Samuel Beckett Bridge? It looks a lot like Calatrava. Santiago Calatrava, responsible for the $4 billion train station in New York City. Let us know. Is this a Calatrava bridge? Eibel says, yes, it is. Oh my God, it is. We meet again, Santiago. Santiago Calatrava. So, if it was four billion for a train station, and this is merely just a bridge, was this a billion dollar bridge? Let me know. It's a beautiful bridge. Yeah, it's nice. It looks like a sail.
Wow, this is uh, looking a lot like the Isle of Dogs in London. A lot of new development here by the water. So I assume this is becoming more of a hip area, potentially. But still pretty damn empty. It is very quiet over here. The Color Travel Bridge. Oh, okay, that's very inexpensive. Alexander says it costs 60 million euro. That's inexpensive. Yeah, let us know why is this area so empty? There seems to be a lot of hotels, a lot of condominiums. Usually with these newer areas, there's a little bit more life. But here it's very, very quiet. McCully says this is modern, yeah. Modern, yeah. Used to be the... has been converted to modern living and offices. Apartments. Ah, that's mine. And it is Sunday. Morgan says Sunday. What time is church? <laughs> yeah, do let us know what time is uh, Sunday Mass for... Irish Catholics. Oh, so Timothy says it's empty because no one can afford the rent. I can imagine. I've heard that it's an issue here in, in Ireland. In Dublin, specifically. Yeah, there we go. A bridge. Very nice. Griffin says Dublin is about three hours walk from side to side. Thank you so much for letting us know. Harp on the edge. Yeah, it look, does look a little bit like a harp as well. It actually does look like a harp. So if anyone can check what was Santiago Calatrava's original intention with this bridge. Is it a harp or a sail? Dublin has New York City like rents. Oh yeah. I can tell by how much I'm paying for lodging. This is a very interesting building. Okay, I'll show you a little bit of the bridge. Hold on, let me walk to the other side. Building the Coke can, says Albert. Yeah, it does kind of look like a Coke can. Now it's getting cold. Part of the wind sounds. Designed to represent the harp. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Fire Life. So there we go. A harp bridge. What is everyone harping on? Harping on about? Hey, MK. Nice to see you here, Mona. Welcome. How far is Belfast from Dublin? I think it's only a two-hour train ride. Probably is around the same in driving. Things are close. You can potentially visit a lot of cities here just taking trains. 
what was the name of the sculpture you showed us before? Ah, I didn't catch the name, but it should be a part of the Famine Walk. Family Memorial. Thank you so much, everyone. Let me know. How many stars do you need? Mona, we are about 18,000 stars away. So if I miss any stars, do let me know if you send a star. Uh, Kay, let me know if anyone uh, sends stars. So thank you so much everyone for sending stars on Facebook and thank you people, everyone sending uh, super chats on YT. Allows me to show you cool places. These next two days, I'm gonna show you some cool places. And it's thanks to you, for everyone who's been contributing in various ways. And patrons are getting access to a bonus video of the long room at the Trinity College and other 360 videos moving forward. Continue walking through. All right, let's see what's over here. There's a pub named the Ferryman. The sky is so beautiful. It looks like a rainy fall day. Yeah, <laughs> it is a fall day. It's getting chilly. Here's a Coke can. Four thousand stars were sent. Oh my god! Okay, so we're a little bit closer. We're about fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand stars. I stayed at the ferryman. It says just Kate. Really? You stayed over here? Wow. Okay. Cool. Oh my god! Pie? Why is it closed? No. Hey everyone. Authentic Irish pub. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Authentic Irish pub. Okay, <laughs> so here we have. It says this place has been granted the James Joyce Award for being an authentic Dublin pub. A good puzzle would be to cross the Dublin without passing a pub. They're quoting Ulysses. James Joyce identified and described the characteristic ambiance of a Dublin pub life so successful that the characters in Ulysses may be they fictional but they are based on a multitude of living beings characters who Joyce found in pubs just like this one. This establishment remains an astounding example of the tradition in which James Joyce immortalized in his works in this truly authentic public house. Throughout the years have retained its down-to-earth genuineness and atmosphere and friendliness and the presence of good people. Mona, thank you so much for sending a thousand stars. I appreciate you, Mona. Anne Marie, stars are only on uh, Facebook. So the it's super chats, the version. So here's an authentic Irish pub. Authentic Irish pub. Uh, so yes, Marianne on YT. We have a different Marianne. 
tuning in also on uh, Facebook. Thank you so much for uh, wanting to send stars. It's on Facebook. It's a two-step process. You got to buy stars and then send them. Unlike Super Chats, where you just send a Super Chat. Uh, so thank you so much. The other Marianne already on Facebook that send more stars. Thank you so much as well. <laughs> Wendy says, here's some <laughs> on here. <laughs> Wendy, I appreciate the star emoji. Thank you so much. All right, so let me just go a little bit further down over here. Keep going that direction for the Grand Canal. Down this way, Eibel? Okay, so we'll make that our final stop. I need to go back to Ireland. Was only there once, way back in 1989. Jason, tattooed the stars. Yeah, yeah, Jason, thank you. So is this way the Grand Canal? Can you believe that you were in Athens, Rome, Venice, now Dublin in just a little over two months? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's been a wild ride. After this um, Irish chilliness, uh, my heart is yearning to experience some hot tropical weather once again. The next left for the Grand Canal. Okay, thank you so much. Hey, Mona says, I really like that you're wandering a lot. It's nice to see uh, the country this way. So left. Wendy says Santorini again, please. <laughs> Some hot Scottish sunshine, says Susie. Yes, of course, uh, Susie. Oh, I'm freezing. This is the weird thing about Irish weather. It's, it was warm during the daytime, but now it's getting chilly. Ah, here's the Facebook offices. This is where I claim my uh, double stars. I come here and uh, Mark Zuckerberg gives me a uh, full, full, a few million for spreading the word of Facebook. Thank you so much, Mark. I appreciate that. I'll be coming back here, Mark. Don't worry. Dublin has some fantastic Greek restaurants, says John. <laughs> they do. Cloudy over here. And this theater, the Board Guys Energy Theater, is playing Book of Mormon. That's kind of cool. Mr. D, um, MDN says, um, Tokyo is also calling you. UK isn't open to tourism. No, it's not. Oh, believe me. How I want to stroll the rainy streets of Edinburgh. Go to the town in Wales where the name is so long. That will require an entire live stream just to say it. And to frolic on the English countryside with buying sheep. 
and have dinner with the queen at Buckingham Palace. But no, Britain is still tricky to go in. Jasmine sent 310 stars. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I appreciate you, Jasmine. Thank you. Oh, this is a nice part of town. Oh, wow. Thank you, uh, Eibel and a few others for leading us here. This is the Ground Canal area. Now there's a little bit of life. This is nice to see. I was a little bit worried there that we reached the end of Dublin, but luckily there was a little bit more. Sfield says Dublin wasn't high in my cities to visit, but it is now. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. This place is nice and nice, says Zoe. Oh, I'm glad to hear. Looks like Google Office Park. It's right down there. So let's stroll a little bit around this area. Does this remind you of Hudson Yards? Not really. Uh, does not remind me of Hudson Yards, even though there is similarity with the architecture. And oh my god, these seagulls have pooped all around this uh, little walkway area. There are some similarities in terms of architecture. Uh, Hudson Yards is just way bigger <laughs> in scale. This reminds me of Boston's... I think it's called North Bay? If anyone could uh, remind me, what is the name of Boston's newly developed area it reminds me a whole lot of that area in boston a whole lot actually am i in boston right now did, did i mistakenly go through a multi-dimensional portal and uh, step foot into boston because um this looks wicked smart as the bostonians say Sarah says, thank you so much for relaxing live. Oh, my pleasure. Be careful. The water is near. Oh, yes, indeed. The water is indeed near. Right there. Just over the edge. I got to uh, take off my sunglasses because it is uh, very cloudy. You know, I am in Ireland, but I don't want to cosplay too much as Bono. So I uh, remove, as the Brits like to say, my sunnies. I'm not sure if the, in Ireland they say sunnies. But I gotta remove my sunnies to uh, not come off like I'm cosplaying as Bono from YouTube. So if anyone has any final recommendations in this Grand Canal area, anything else that should show, do let me know. You can book a barge trip along the canal. Oh, says Helen. Oh, that's cool. Uh, oh, go to the Cotswolds. Isn't that in um, Cornwall? Isn't that in uh, England? Uh, who said that? Uh, Fatima. And Boston is my all-time favorite city in the world. A lot of the best parts of Dublin uh, share similarities with Boston. I think. I would love to see a traditional meal. Me too. I would love to show you a traditional meal. I'll find a traditional meal to show all of you. Me too. I don't think this might be the area to show a traditional meal. It seems very modern. Is it lunchtime yet? Oh, it's dinner time. Here in Ireland, they eat early. Another reason it was tricky for me to, to show food yesterday after the live video is because a lot of these pubs that serve food stop serving food around 7 30 p.m may they serve a uh, bites or two but not the full meals so yeah yeah things close early not close but uh they stop serving food early Ivo says nothing here if you want traditional yeah seems like it but we have some nut butter look at that some Nut butter, hmm. Some butter from nuts. Ooh. 
I like butter. I do like nuts. Maybe some butternuts. <laughs> this looks like a cafe. I gotta save my appetite for a good Irish stew. I like those chairs. Yeah, they're nice chairs. Hey, Bruce, watching from Melbourne. Welcome. This area looks dangerous for someone who's drunk, says Joe. <laughs> yeah, indeed. There is no railing. Uh, Erivas, thank you so much. For me, I ate do uh, dinner early at 5.30. Ah, uh, Christine, thank you so much for 500 stars. Try Jeannie Johnston, says Just Kate. What is this? What is that? Try the Valentino coffee shop. Mark Weens was just in Boston. Oh, cool. There's another famous uh, YouTuber here who, who was here very recently. Uh, Gabrielle's Travels. He's been following me because he was uh, Milan and Italy the same time I was. He was in Greece around the same time I was. And now he was in Ireland around the same time I am. Husky, did I move to Europe? I've set a new life upon the old continent. Ooh, artisanal bakery and cafe? What? I like artisanal baked goods. What goes on Dublin stays in Dublin. Oh, that's good. That's good to hear. So my shenanigan shenanigans that have transpired here will not uh, be told back to the New Yorkers. Well, this is a very nice area in terms of industrial. Look at that. Across the street. That's kind of cool. Look at that. These used to be flour mills. Oh, that's very nice. Just kicking for another fi 500 stars. Thank you so, Mona. I appreciate you for the 500 stars. Mona, thank you so much for the 500 stars. I appreciate you. Thank you. For a total of 1,000 stars. Ooh, ooh. The old Bolon's Mill, 1916. Rising in there has new add-ons. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> Paul says all of your American taxes are hard at work here. <laughs> um, Paul is wanting on, on Facebook. Paul, who's a loyal viewer and super urbanist, he's wanting to start an international incident <laughs> by saying that, oh, oh nice. Good buildings. I have I paid for that. <laughs> As an American, uh, this is not an economics channel, so that that's a very interesting conversation. There's a uh, great videos on YouTube about that that topic. Uh, thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in. If you want access to 360 videos of uh, Dublin and Ireland these next few weeks, you can become a super urbanist. Right now, there's one up, and also you have access to the back catalog of Mexico, Greece, and Italy. Um, that will be slowly trickled out. Uh, some of them might be posted live, but uh, publicly, but not all of them. So if you really want to get access to every single 360 VR video I've done, you can become a super urbanist. And they give t I give tours of places that I haven't featured on live video. And some of them are places I've shown on live video and you get to see in every single direction possible. So that is patreon.com slash urbanist patreon.com slash urbanist put exclamation point patreon on yt for the link 
to pop up or press that join button on YT right down below or that become a supporter button which you just should see on the main page on the FB on the Facebook. Other than that, um, if you want to leave an individual contribution, you can do that at paypal.me slash Ariel Vieira. And you can leave an individual contribution where I'll be able to show you more places all around Ireland. All contributions go to show you more places in this country for attractions, for transportation, for food that I show, and other things like that. And day trips too. And then beyond that, if you want a postcard, you can become a mega urbanist. So stay tuned. Tomorrow, we will be going to one of the oldest places on earth. A place that predates even the Stonehenge in England by many hundreds of years. A place that's shrouded in mystery, a place that even predates the Celts. Because everyone associates Ireland with Celts. Well, there were people here before the Celts. Who were they? Well, we will find out tomorrow. On a random time, I can't promise the time, but it'll be earlier than 4 p.m. It'll probably be around 1 p.m.-ish uh, uh, Irish time. And then another day afterwards on Tuesday, it will be a place where it is one of the most magnificent natural landscapes in all of Ireland. Stay tuned for that on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, I'll be back at 4 p.m. And maybe with a special guest. Stay tuned, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Ariel. This is Urbanist. And um, Slan Fahol, everyone, which means goodbye in a more casual way. Or see you later in Irish. Slan Fahol, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Slan Fahol.